Hillary I know you've Clinton, sort of done a, done Hillary a change. Clinton, there. Yes, I yeah. was an early fan of Hillary Clinton. Then I became very, very cross with her. Okay, <laughs> when, when, for example, she ruined our, our chance for health care reform mm -hmm. when even Republicans were for it in um, in 1993. Okay, she mishandled that. Then the way she behaved, like Evita Perón, um, randomly disposing of, of, of you know, records that were under subpoena. Um, I, I mean, I, I thought it was atrocious the way she behaved for the for, you know, mm -hmm. and, and for the rest of the Clinton regime. But um, since she was elected to um, to the to the you know, post of senator, although with no credentials whatever for it, as far as I can see, um, I, now I'm very very hopeful that okay, she's gotten back on track and that she will make a run for the for the White House. I hope she's not going to just follow the polls. Oh, you, you know, because we need. You don't think she's becoming a peaser and a kind of I, a, a well, I, I, stamping I, down of her, her? I'm very very critical of her. Okay, mm -hmm. and of all the senators for going down flat and voting for the war resolution. Mm -hmm. I've spoken out you know, against the Iraq incursion and occupation, and you know, I still am as strong against that as, as ever. Um, I think she's turned into a kind of a, a trimmer, a kind of a compromiser. Nevertheless, we need women to make a run at the White House and not just be cushioned as Hillary is in this like limousine world where everything is like is like done for her. You've got to get out on the road like the guys, okay, and start to really duke it out on the road. Now I don't know if she can survive that. I don't, right. I don't think she's she has good. You don't think she's skills. tough enough for that? She's not. No, and she she's she's yeah. a, she's at this point she's kind of a queen. She's an empress. She doesn't want to work that hard, okay? And she she gets she, and she and she she shows the wear of the road. She gets strident when, when she's loud. Yeah. And I'm really sorry that, that Dianne Feinstein never, never ran, because I think Dianne Feinstein has all the ingredients to be a true commander in chief. She's steady, you know, she has the TV skills and so on. But, but we need the women to run. You've got to get out there. Okay? They, they, look at the men. The men go out there and they, they're just dogged. The men right, are dogged. Right. And they lose. And we need to lose. Yeah. And lose women and lose need to, yeah. get, to, right. to have fist and, and well get knocked down. Okay? And, 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 she, and she, this is going to be the model run for a woman. And yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be Hillary. I mean, I, what I fear is that it's going to be Condoleezza Rice who's going to be the first. Because Condoleezza Rice as, as, is a performer. She's an athlete. Okay? Um, you know, she's, a, she's an ice skater. You know, she's, she's she actually my piano. next. Yeah, what yeah. do you think? Think of her. I, well, do you admire she, her? No, because yeah. because I feel that she she's too narrow a personality mm -hmm. to, to to be a proper president. She but she has the administrative skills. She had she had been provost at Stanford, but she also knows how to perform in public. She knows how to hold herself. She knows how to shop for herself. Okay. <laughs> Whereas Hillary has her, her yeah, has her right. shoppers and, and she knows look that what good. she wants to look like. And right. man, this is a man. I hate to say it, but mm -hmm. Condi Rice out there, okay, standing in front of the camera, standing among the troops, that is a commander in chief. Unfortunately, not a good president, okay? Yeah, a good yeah. commander in chief, okay? I, I think she has a narrow view of the world. Um, she is a she's a Sovietologist. She that she has real she's screwed up, okay, in terms of signs that there was mm. going to be an attack on the World Trade Center. All kinds of things. So she they, she she like was surprised when Hamas won. <laughs> oh dear, I must find out why. Okay, so, <laughs> so there's a limitation there. Tremendous Perhaps limitation. Perhaps even an intellectual but, limitation. But I do, well, I I think a limitation as a strategist, as mm. a geopolitical uh, strategist. But, but but Hillary Clinton also okay has right. that. I right. was the only feminist okay in the early '90s saying. We, please, women, get off this obsession with domestic issues and start studying foreign affairs and military history because it's the only way we're going to get a woman president. And notice Hillary finally, belatedly, has got herself onto, you know, onto, onto committees that have to do right, with foreign affairs. Right. Although there's a little contradiction there because you are someone known to say that there's something true about sexual stereotypes, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's right. The, the basis. And, right. and, and yet you seem to be critiquing the tendency of women to concentrate on the home. And what, I mean, I, I was going to ask you, what do you make of this whole turn back of women, educated women, to stay at home with the children, to not be out in the world? Do you mm -hmm. see this as a healthy trend? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Really? I, for years, I have called for this. I have said uh, that, that, that all feminism should be about is about options. That, that feminism should remove um, every impediment to women's advance in the public realm. Right? But okay, this devalorization of the stay-at-home mom, of the role of mother, that has been a poison in feminism. Mm. I, I come out of an Italian culture where the role of mother is, is, is extremely um, honored, right? And also, uh, coming from Italy, and, and, so, and so recently, too, because all four of my grandparents were born there, and my mother, um, we both, we all have been authorities, but we have mm. all kinds of connections with the family back in Italy. Since the idea of quality of life is very important to Mediterranean cultures, and in, in, in Italy, in France, and in, in Spain, okay, and, and in Greece also, the idea of living a happy life, a happy family life, mm. that, is, that went off the table. Well, uh, feminism got out of control in pushing the image of the, the successful 
upper middle class white woman with an attache case as the ultimate model of human perfection and happiness. Right. And I, I was writing in Vamps and Tramps okay, that, um, that, that when I, you know, I, I was at Yale in grad school when the first women came in undergraduates, and I felt the difference. Way back the first year I was there in 1968, you were kind of like basilisk. You were like a phoenix. You were, you were an oddity, a woman. Okay? And uh -huh. I remember entering the main you know, reading room of the, of the library at Yale, and every, you know, I would follow you, a woman, okay, walking down, and walking down, even though women had been there for 100 right, years right. Okay, in professional schools and med schools, and all of a sudden the women arrived, okay, undergraduate women. Um, and so I thought, well, this is a, a, you know, a great step forward. But and so I was gone teaching up at Bennington for, a lot of, for about eight, almost eight years and returned in the early 80s and, and was living in New Haven again. Uh, and I, I was shocked when I went, when I went into the library um, restrooms. Okay, there was there was scrawled the graffiti in the, on the women's restrooms. It was like a, a, a grotesque imagery of nausea and, 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 and of self-hatred and all kinds of things. And I, and I, said, to, I said to people at the time, friends, I said something is going very so wrong with feminism. So you felt these women with were being feminism. Too, too pushed in one direction. Yes, I feel that the thing is that all that this epidemic of bulimia and anorexia, okay, which, which people like Naomi Wolf were blaming on the media, okay, I think had to do with a real disconnect. Okay, that is, too many young women okay, were now being packaged by their upper middle class parents as future leaders, as Yale tells them. Okay? This is your track for you. Here you go. Okay? You're in college for four years, then you'll be in grad school or professional school. Then you're going to be there. And, and, right. and by the time you're allowed okay, to be married and to have children, to answer any inner cue of your body, will be way down the line. Okay? I believe half those women didn't really want to be there. And I said, if, if, if any Yale undergraduate said to, to her family, okay, I want to drop out, marry my boyfriend, and have a child, they would say, you're wasting your life wasting your life, okay, to marry, okay, for love, okay, and have a child, okay, in your early 20s, let's say, okay, oh, excuse me, something's gone but very wrong with the culture. But don't you think things have swung back a little? You saw there yeah. was a survey, 50% mm -hmm. of the Yale undergraduate yeah. women now say they want to stay home with children. I mean, they're getting this very expensive education, yes. and what is it, they're going to stay home and, and, and groom their children no. and well, drive say, them to the soccer match? Here's what I say. I say that it's more healthier for women to have children when they're young, when they have energy. It's healthier for children to have young mothers, all right? And I'm saying that we need to adjust the entire educational system to well, allow. That I, I agree with. This is with what I'm saying. I say it's a, a, a grotesque and awful okay, uh, assembly line we've constructed. I want okay, this to be totally broken down. You know, in Europe, people often take a take an off year yeah, in between yeah. high school and high. This is terrible. Right now, the, the, the upper middle class parents are pushing their kids competitively to start thinking about college already in their sophomore year of high school. Oh. It's, it's crazy. Okay? Oh, even it's in middle it's school, it's, it's going on. It's yeah. insane. It's got to mm -hmm. stop. It's got to right. stop. I say, okay, break it up. Okay, we must. We need more adults into college. Okay, I want. I want the college classroom to be filled with adults returning. Okay, I want it with, without an, you know any any um, any sense of, of negativity for people to say, I think I'll do two years of college now. Okay, and then you know and then get married and then return, or I, I'm, I'm going to take a break between college and grad school and, and, and return. Yeah. We got to make it easier for the mothers, okay, and for adults, okay, to come back. And, and, and it, this is better also for people who want to be writers or artists because you don't want this like professional track, okay? You want people to go out in the world, experience You're life. Absolutely We've right. got I to make it better. I couldn't and agree easier. more. Yeah, we have to make it so. better and easier for, for mothers to be with their children. Now, the thing is, like, oh, Susan Faludi, <laughs> these people haven't had children. You know, they say, oh, well, fathers should do more. There's a limit to what a father can do. Okay, the baby wants the mother. The ba babies don't want the fathers. Okay, <laughs> yeah. they, they, they want the soft, soothing everything. Okay, there's a connection between the mother and the child that is biological. Okay, that we have to honor. Okay, I want to switch gears. Okay, again, sure. Because okay. we have a lot to cover oh, sure. here. I want to talk about beauty. Sure. Okay. Um, I think that you would say you would agree, perhaps, with me that in academia, that is something that's being uh, uh, neglected. Uh, particularly on the level of the writing, um, you know, it used to oh. be that you know, uh, if you you loved literature, partially because it was beautiful, it moved you, right. and you wrote about it, trying to express that mm -hmm. in the most eloquent mm -hmm. prose possible. Mm -hmm. What has happened to academic writing? I mean, do you think there has been something that's happened, and do you think it will change back? Do you think that this is just a temporary well, aberration? There, there are two subjects there. Okay? Yeah. Number one, a sexual persona uh, talked about beauty okay, in a polemical way and, and, and has had an enormous influence. Even if, even if the academics who have been influenced by it won't admit it. Okay? They, uh -huh. they may have I've influenced so many people, people may not realize as they're talking about beauty in class, okay, they say, oh no, I'm getting it from this person. Well, that person got it from that person who got it from sexual persona. Uh -huh. It was in a tremendous manifesto. Okay? Um, beauty was attacked. The beauty 
beauty myth is a good example. Naomi right. Wolf's idol. Um, you know, it, 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 the way beauty had been handled or aesthetics, okay, I mean, essentially dropped, okay, over over a period of like tw some 25 years in the period of post-structuralism and post-modernism and identity politics, where you reduce literature to its content, to whether it has approved positions on uh, racism, sexism, homophobia. You know, it's, I, I call it the, the, the red pen kind of way of reading. <laughs> Check wrong, 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 like right. that, and so on. Um, and but but I you know I pointed out that there's this tremendous tradition in, in gay male culture going back through Oscar Wilde, going back to the ancient Greeks, you know, of, of the worship of beauty. Now, of course, in the post-structuralist writing, okay, in its in its jargon choked style, in its imitation of bad translations of, of the of the French theorists, okay certainly destroyed humanity's writing as having any kinds of appeal to outside readers. Mm -hmm. I was influenced very strongly in college by the British style, the belletristic British style mm -hmm. um, of you know, Gilbert Murray, C.M. Bowra. I love this lucid style uh, and very, very personal, okay, but, but very engaged, very relaxed. How was that, how was that found at Yale when you, you were there at the, really the high point of theory at Yale no, when you were in graduate school? It hadn't yet come about? No, I yeah. was there from 68 to 72. At the very end, 71, 72, um, Derrida and, and Lacan were starting to be the, the thing. Okay, and I and, and and that's when the drift happened. Um, Jeffrey Hartman was drifting, you know, in that direction. And I and I said to to a fellow student, I said, "What is this?" I said, "It's like high priests murmuring to each other." Okay, yeah. and, and, and I said, "This is a turn away from the authentic 60s revolution, which was populist." Okay, Marshall McLuhan, okay, is is you know is a, a figure to me that it should have been uh, showing the direction, or Leslie Fiedler, who influenced. Mm -hmm. Also, this is an, an open style that can be read even with ease, you know, by the general audience. So that was a poison, okay? That a disaster. The humanities destroyed themselves, okay? And it's taken now 25 years later. Now they're and all it's waking beginning up. Beginning to turn. Now they're all waking yeah. up. Now, so what have we wrought? What have you wrought? You've destroyed the, the English departments. You've destroyed the literature departments. You've destroyed several generations of students, okay? Who don't know how to write, okay? Now, all these undergrads, they had to imitate that, okay? They're waking up as, as they get media jobs, okay? Slowly. Oh, how do can I unlearn that? Okay? Meanwhile, me, okay, I, thank God, I had, I had uh, teachers in college at the State University of New York at Binghamton that believed in value and quality and put that before me, value and quality, never mm -hmm. tried to impose their voices on me. So I've been de developing my personal voice as a writer since I was in college, okay? And if I have a voice as a writer now, it's because, I, I, because of a fine teaching and not this crap and this do jargon. You, do you see yourself in this tradition of Matthew Arnold, Lionel Matthew Trilling? Arnold, no. uh, the aesthetic no. and the moral, do you see a no. combination there? Or no, that's no. Not if no, I never. I never was interested in either. I, I read Lionel Trilling, okay, mm -hmm. and I, I found him. Find him so snobbish and and you know and above it all. He wasn't and, interested in popular culture. Yeah, that's for no, sure. I, mean, I, I mean, he had a lucid style. Yeah. I mean, he really did. Um, and he, I respected him as an intellectual. I mean, yeah. I had his book of sincerity and authenticity and so on. Um, I, I read Matthew Arnold. I never liked it. I, I'm I'm influenced by. Um, the, the, uh, Walter Pater, Walter Pater, and, and and Oscar Wilde, and their French precursors, so the arts, art for art's sake, and sort of the art for art's sake school. Okay, okay. But, but but then I also was influenced by the Cambridge School of Anthropology. Okay, the, the classics. Okay, and which I, as I said, like Gilbert Murray or, or Jane Harrison. Okay, the, or or or, or J, Sir James George Fraser, The Golden Bough. The ability to write in, in a way that's oh, that's literary. Okay, but but you hear the voice of of the person. It's a real voice of a real person mm. speaking to an interested general audience. Right. Well, we don't have much time, but okay. I wonder if you would give uh, just a few words about where you think both art and perhaps criticism um, are going in the, this century. I mean, do, do, you, do you have a, a positive and optimistic view of the future? Well, I mean, I think we drove, I mean, I, mean, I, I didn't drive, but I think, I think professors drove some of the most promising grad students away. I, I've gotten all kinds of letters over the last, like, 15 years since I've been in the public eye from, 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 from people uh, you know, who left the grad school. So I think we have to reattract re interested and engaged and enthusiastic young people back into the grad schools. But I do feel, yes, I think that, you know, that, that the profession of teaching, okay, um, is, is one that's, um, you know, so, that's socially useful. Uh, I'm hoping that the academy can be reformed and, and, and art and literature can be revived again. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This was invigorating. Thank you, right. thank you Camille Paglia, for thank being you. here today, and thank you for joining us at the Drexel interview.